Hello, welcome back. My name is Chance Bingen, Principal Technical Marketing Engineer at NetApp, focusing on virtualization with our ONTAP systems. This is a series of videos where I'm gonna walk you through just how easy and simple it is to manage storage using the ONTAP tools for VMware vSphere, vCenter plugin, REST API server, and all the other capabilities that it brings to the table. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through the initial installation and configuration of ONTAP tools. Now, we're going to be using the latest 10.4 release today. It's pretty similar with 10.3. If you saw my previous video on how to deploy ONTAP tools 10.1, uh, remove that from your favorites because this is completely different. All right, let's go into the lab and get started. OK, so here we are looking at one of my lab clusters. Uh, what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and jump over to the content library. And here you can see, once we get into the library, I've already uploaded ONTAP tools to it. Uh, you don't absolutely have to do this uh, if you're only going to stick with just a simple single node deployment and you're not going to use VASA or need any of the uh, low balanced, high availability stuff. Uh, for today, uh, I am going to go ahead and use the content library because I will be scaling this out. And there's some things that I want to show you during the deployment to keep, uh, keep an eye on when you do this by yourself. So let's go ahead and go back to inventory and I'm just gonna deploy this on the cluster. So I'm gonna right click on cluster, uh, go to new virtual machine, deploy from template, next. So I've got my template here, next. And then I'm gonna give it a name. I'm just gonna call it, I'll let it auto complete that, VCF OTV01. And I'm going to go ahead and let that go into the Raleigh data center for the name and folder. I'm also going to click down here, customize this virtual machine's hardware. Um, you don't have to do that if you're not going to scale it out. But if you are, there's some things, there's a trick you can do that's going to make that less painful later on. And I'm also going to go ahead and power this on automatically when I'm done. And we'll just next. Okay, and here's our details. Next, I'm going to carefully read my license agreement and click next. I'm going to select some storage. Um, let's go ahead and put it on this one has plenty. And I'm going to put it on my correct network. Uh, so since we're here, I'll mention it. This does need to be able to communicate on your management network. It needs to be able to talk to vCenter, and it also needs to be able to talk to the management interfaces of your ONTAP clusters. Now, we, can, uh, we do need to give it an administrator name. So this is the ONTAP tools administrator, not to be confused with any other administrators. So I'm actually just going to give it a name there. I'm just going to use my uh, password that I usually use. I'm going to use our internal time server. So here are, you'll notice that for the initial deployment, I've got three IP addresses I'm going to have to use. The first one is the ONTAP tools application address. So this is when you're sending API calls and when you're you know, actually ac accessing the remote GUI elements through the vCenter UI. This is what it's actually going to use. So we're going to make this one uh, .40. Uh, the ONTAP Tools virtual IP address. Now ONTAP Tools is running a, uh, a containerized microservice set of applications inside of it. Uh, so this is actually the IP address for the Kubernetes cluster that's running inside of it. Now when you scale out and you start adding more ONTAP Tools nodes, uh, they're going to need to talk to each other with that as well. Okay, so we're going to give the host name. So this is the DNS host name, and you do have to have these in DNS for the node itself. So I'm going to just give it the lab uh, DNS servers. I'm going to add it to that domain. And this is going to be the node IP address. So this is kind of the, the Debian Linux IP address of the appliance, if you will. 
give it subnet mask and gateway. Uh, this is all, for the most part, it's pretty much standard. Deploying any appliance is pretty much the same. I'm going to hit next. Okay, so you remember we checked that checkbox for customized virtual machine hardware. And here's why you want to do that. If you ever want to scale up this appliance or scale it out, uh, you're probably going to be adding more CPUs to it. And this is all handled automatically through part of the um, scale out or scale up um, wizard, if you will. But in order for this to actually work, you have to have CPU hot add enabled. So it's best to go ahead and do it now so that you don't have to come and do it later. The other thing you're going to do is down under memory, you're going to enable memory hot plug. Because if you, let's say you scale up from small to medium to large, it's going to want you know, more CPUs, more memory, all that kind of stuff. So it's best to do it now so that you're ready for when the day comes. So we'll go ahead and hit next and finish. So it's cloning out the virtual machine. And as soon as it's done cloning, it will go ahead and power that up. All right. Okay, we can see we're about 65% copied, 91% deployed, completed, and you can see it automatically powered up. So I'm going to go ahead and launch the web console. Now, since this is the initial deployment, it's actually going to go in and build the Kubernetes cluster inside the appliance that's going to be serving all of these uh, wonderful uh, microservice applications. Uh, however, keep in mind that's going to take half hour up to 45 minutes, depending on the resources available. So um, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this once we get that going to make sure it's, uh, you know, make sure everything gets going right. And then we're going to go ahead and fast forward until the end through the magic of Hollywood. Okay, we are back. So now we can see the process is finished. It's uh, installed and uh, launched all the applications and it's ready to go. What you see now is the maintenance menu. So this is where you would go if you had to open a support ticket and they wanted to log in with you into the console and run some commands, things like that. You would do that here. But today uh, we're gonna jump over to the ONTAP tools management console. All right, so I uh, just launched that. So you remember I typed admin as my username. So we're going to go ahead and log in here. Now you can see uh, right off the bat, we've got a quick start menu here. We can go to edit appliance settings, to scale up, scale out, or enable services, do all that kind of stuff. We can add our storage backends, and we can add our vCenters. So we'll start out by adding vCenters. We're going to add my vCenter. Now here, we're going to supply, obviously, since we're adding a vCenter, we're adding vCenter credentials. All right, and then we're going to use my password. And we'll hit add. So you see that's very fast. What it just did is um, onboarded that vCenter to be managed by ONTAP tools. And it also pushed the ONTAP Tools uh, remote plugin registration to vCenter. So uh, one other thing I'll show you is while we're here, if I wanted to use the secure multi-tenancy feature of ONTAP Tools, where I would uh, essentially delegate a storage virtual machine to a particular vCenter and allow them to self-manage within that SVM, I would do that here. I want to add the cluster here, and then I would delegate the SVM to the vCenter administrator later. But for now, since we're just doing a simple um, uh, deployment with one vCenter, I'm not doing multi-tenancy. I'm just going to do everything from here. You can see it says the plugin was successfully deployed. I'm going to refresh my browser. So now I've got all the goodness of ONTAP tools. I can uh, right-click, create data stores, all that stuff. It's still loading at plugin elements. That's fine. Before we can actually do anything with storage, we actually have to add storage. So you can see I have zero storage backends added. I'm going to add one. We're going to add the uh, uh, IP address or FQDN for the, uh, the cluster management list. In this case, since I'm actually going to use the entire cluster, 
Uh, you don't have to do that. I just copied that out of the system manager from that. Um, now we're going to give it the username. Now it's going to onboard that cluster and it's going to discover all the assets and it's going to see if it can already correlate those assets with other things already in the cluster, which it can because a lot of those data stores you saw earlier are actually on this cluster. Um, so we're going to let that go ahead and discover things. While it's doing that, I'm going to show you one other thing from the ONTAP Tools Manager. Okay, so back in the ONTAP Tools Manager, uh, in the Getting Started page, one of the things was a tool that you could download to help you create RBAC roles within the ONTAP storage cluster to give just the right amount of permissions to the user that's going to be onboarding the storage. You saw I added admin. You don't have to do that. In fact, in production, you probably wouldn't do that. Um, if you're already past the Getting Started page, you can go here to download RBAC user creator for ONTAP. And you see it just downloaded a JSON file .zip, or user roles .zip. So that has a JSON file in it. You can take that JSON file and upload it into your ONTAP system manager, and it will allow you to choose from a number of different user um, permissions and roles. We can see it's mostly discovered this, this storage. So let's go over and look at inventory. We'll go look at one of these data stores, for example, this one. Okay, so it's finished discovering all the storage, all the data stores, and now I can start doing some additional things. Like I, I can come in here, look at the extension, and see all the storage details from the array, including things like initiator groups, um, the path to the device on the array, the NAA ID. Um, all this stuff is incredibly helpful if you ever need to do any kind of troubleshooting or anything like that. So that wraps up this introduction to ONTAP tools. In the next episodes, you'll see how easy it is to provision storage and manage storage and do um, all kinds of very interesting things with vSphere when using ONTAP tools from NetApp. Thanks. Hope you have a great day. We'll see you next time.